What's going on YouTube? It's officially my third intro I have done this week. Um, I have had a couple of projects go just absolutely haywire on me. So, uh, ran out of ideas. It is now Monday. Uh, my videos come out on Tuesday. So we are down to the wire here. Um, so I thought what we'd do today is I've got a couple of, couple of pin blanks here. Um, I know probably some of y'all are watching there going, hey, they don't look the same. Well, it's because they're not the same. Uh, we've got some blood wood here, uh, really cool looking wood. And then we've got a piece of acrylic. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing today is making two pins. Pin that we're gonna make is, uh, only takes one blank and it has caps on each side, unlike the pin in my first video. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda do a comparison video of turning wood pin versus turning an acrylic pin. And the process is uh, similar and different. Um, finishing process is different, but turning's pretty similar. And then we'll have two pins ready to go uh, when this is done. So stick around. All right, for some reason I lost audio here. But what was said is if you like what you're seeing, please smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so you always see when I got a new video going live. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the Crosscut Turning Channel. Alright, so here we are. We're going to get started on these pins. Uh, so I'm going to turn the lead back off. I realized that I have to up the speed on these things. These uh, small, small pins and stuff, you want a pretty high speed going on these. I run mine at the highest speed delay that let me. I'm only got a five speed, so I think the highest speed is like 3,200 RPMs, is is what I want to say. So you gotta sit there and loosen the motor, raise it up, move the belt over on both pulleys. You got one right there, you can see one blow it, and we got a really high speed going here. We're gonna start out with the square carbide, and we're just gonna be rounding these things off back and forth. Uh, biggest difference in actually turning these two is you can be a little bit more aggressive on the wood. Then you can't need acrylic uh, without having to worry about big chip outs and stuff like that. You'll kind of see that as we go. It took no time at all to to get the wood really rounded out. Then we're going to start over here on the acrylic here in just a second. One thing I will say that I just found out that I had it came with my uh, I think it came with my chuck. Uh, I didn't even realize I had it. Is this tailstock? Uh, normally, what you'll do is you'll have a, a little brass neural nut that'll go on the end of this pen mantle to screw everything down, and it puts pressure on on the blanks to make sure they stay tight and everything. And then you just slide a tailstock into the into the mandrel. But on this, it's actually called a mandrel saver. Uh, tailstock or the live center and the mandrel actually goes through it and so the tailstock is putting pressure or the livestock is putting pressure on the bushings instead of putting pressing, pressure on the mandrel itself so it keeps it from bending and stuff so uh, didn't even realize I had it, it came with my chuck found out about it tried to use it and I can tell you it made a huge difference I noticed the difference with these two pins versus all the other stuff I've done on this lathe. And here we're just trying to get the acrylic round, just rounding it out, taking light passes. You don't want to take too heavy a passes because you can chip out and you have to go further and further and you might not get it to the size you want it. It might be too small because of all the chip outs. So you just want to take time. I've got a fan blowing in the background. You can see the all the chips and everything making it fly fly across my face here. It actually, I think it worked out well because it kept a lot from getting on the lathe and spinning like, like these. There's usually a lot more debris spinning along the lathe with acrylics than this. So. Alright, now I have both pieces completely round. I'm just going to go through and just use the square carbide and press down until I get to close to the final size. You want to get just a little bit bigger than the bushings on the end so you have enough room for standing. 
the little metal bushings would be the, the same size as the empty pen that go in. So get it down to the right thickness pretty quick and then I just kind of go over and I'm making light passes just to smooth it out and also to just get it dialed into the right size that I want and I'm going to do the same process with the acrylic. What you'll see me doing here is I'm going to unscrew the carbide cutter and I'm going to just turn it. I uh, resharpened this entire thing before I before I started the video here, before I started making these pens. But going from acrylic to wood, I think it just dulled it out a little bit. So I'm just doing a fresh edge so we can get through the rest of this acrylic real quick. This is sped up to two times speed, but I'm actually taking a whole little bit more time. This isn't going as fast as you might think. Uh, I'm taking a little bit more time, especially with the acrylic getting it down to the final shape. Didn't want to press too hard. I have gone too aggressive on these things and uh, gotten the worst possible scenario where they've just split and broke and, and shattered to where the whole piece of acrylic was ruined. So, didn't want that to happen. Right here we're just taking a few final passes just to kind of smooth it out. I'm going to get on the very end here in a minute and just kind of put a little chamfer on them to make sure that they're meeting up with that bushing the way I want them to. So I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous video or not, but you're about to see me mess with the little LED light I have. This thing was made, I believe, I found it on Amazon, it was like 20 bucks, made for a sewing machine. Um, but it's got a little magnetic base, really bright. I know y'all can't, you know, see me working there very clearly, it kind of blinded y'all out. But it's really delicate where I'm putting the chamfer on, I don't want to run into the metal bushing. This thing is amazing. Uh, I've got lights, obviously above in the garage and everything but the amount of light you can get concentrated on the area with these things are are awesome and they're for a mini lathe you don't you don't need a big old you know laguna 500 hundred dollar light or anything like that this thing works awesome I'm very happy i got it i've thought about getting a, a second one so i could have two but it's it's worked amazingly so you don't always have to spend thousands of dollars on something you can always repurpose something to make it work for you if you need to all right we're going to start the sanding process and i'm again i didn't record all the sanding it didn't take too long with these things started with 150 sandpaper and go up through 600 i'm going to show you the full part of the 150 and the process is the same for the other four grits so just going, as the lathe's spinning, just going through, hitting the tops up until they're smooth, make sure all the tool marks are out, hitting the ends, and then stop the lathe and go back and forth and get all the scratches that we just put in it going with the lathe spinning, getting all those scratches out. So I'm going to finish sanding up uh, throughout the other grits, and we'll be back as soon as all the dry sand paper. All right, so here we're going to start the finishing on the wood pen. I'm going to start out with the axe abrasive sanding paste. Same as like the wooden bowls and stuff you see me do. 
Just take the sanding paste, rub it on, turn the light on, and just work it in. Keep flipping over to a new space on the paper towel until it uh, stays clean. And then we will go to the polish next. Here we've got the Axe Restoring Paste Polish, Axe Polish Restoring Paste, and then we're going to take just a little dab of that, work it all over, and then we're going to turn the lid on and put a little bit of pressure on the paper towel this time around. Friction polish, so you want it to you want it to heat up a little bit, so it'll give you that good shine. I used to use a different kind of friction polish on these pens, but this, this Axe stuff works great for these wood pens, so that's pretty much all I use on, on any wooden projects I got. Make sure it's got a good shine. And that one is done. So we're going to do a little something different for this uh, acrylic one. Uh, this is some stuff I found on the Craft Supplies, Craft Supplies USA, or whatever the website is. Uh, it's uh, called Scratch Free. And it's, it's similar to the, the Axe products, but it's instead of just this, it'll be four different things. So you're going to apply it just like we did the Axe, take a little dab, work it in, turn the lathe on, keep flipping over to a new piece of the paper towel until it comes off clean. And the other, other steps we're going to take, it's actually a three-step process after this. Um, and this is going to take the place of the micro mesh pads that I used on the last pen video. And it goes from, it's kind of like sanding paper only, it's a, it's a wax, it's a wax sanding, uh, or a paste sanding. And it just gets a uh, finer and finer grit of the paste. So, we'll go through all three steps here. It's, uh, step one, it's called micro magic. And it's got step one, step two, and step three. So it's made by the same people as the Scratch Free, I believe. And the process is the same for all three. Smear some on there, turn the lathe on, work it in until the paper towel comes off clean, then go to the next step. And if this works, then we should be done with the acrylic piece after this. So here we're going to speed up the video to six times. Uh, it's the same process through the, through the last two here. Uh, I'm just going to speed it up to save on some time for the video. Here we're going to start the assembly process. This is sped up to just take each side, put the tip in ever so gently, then you put the back cap on. And with these, the uh, tip unscrews, and you can throw the ink cartridge and the spring in. But first, the most important part is you drop the spring, and then you have to take 10 minutes to look for it. Which is not very easy to do in a pile of saldos. These springs are really small. But without this step, the pen is not going to be finished. You have to lose it first every time. <laughs> Finally found the spring. Right, restart the process here. Put the ink in. Grab the spring. Put the spring on. Put Screw the tip back in. And there we have a finished product. These are a bolt action pen. These are really cool. Uh, big sellers. Alright, and then we're going to repeat the process for the acrylic piece. Nothing changes with the assembly. After you get the tip in, put the back end in. This time I did not lose the spring. Didn't spend 10 minutes looking for it. A little smarter on this pen. Take the tip off, throw the ink cartridge in, throw the spring in, and we've got two finished pens. Alright, 
So here, I've got them up on the lathe. I'm just going to spin them around so you can see what they look like. The acrylic first. Comes out looking awful shiny with that process that we used to finish. And then we got the wood one next. Alright guys, the end of the video. Appreciate y'all making it all the way to the end. Make sure you smash the like button. If you're not already subscribed, I'd really appreciate Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that bell notification. These pins are going to end up in my Etsy store. Links in the description as always. If you want to check these out or anything else that's been made. That is it. I just am very grateful for all the support y'all have given me. Thank y'all and have a great Labor Day.